So, welcome everybody to um, the Embraced by the Dark ritual, the Samhain ritual. Um, I was just thinking this is one that I haven't done for quite a while. We still have people who are popping in and joining us, so you might hear the odd like ding ding and we'll let them in. Um, when I was at uh, the Hive and Grove, um, I created a, in the classroom, I created a whole cauldron and, and we went in and uh, rested in that place and um, it's a bit of a dream. I would love to do that again because it is quite something to enter into this space that, um, that we are held. Um, in the bottom of the cauldron, just resting in that place of gathering the uh, energies to prepare for the return. We are entering into the time which is the darkest of the dark and it is a time to really just allow all to go from everything that we have gone through from the past year, all the previous months and perhaps even, you know, some previous years, the buildup of that. Um, there's nothing to do in this time. There's nothing to do. All the work has been done and the work of the next cycle is yet to come. So we take this time just to allow ourselves to, to rest in the dark and not to think necessarily about all that we have gone through, but just to allow it to move through us, just to breathe through it. And, and to open ourselves to connecting with, um, you know, we're in that realm of, of the ancestors as we allow ourselves to dissolve back into, you know, the cosmos and, and be aware that we, we come from the all, we return to the all. And at this time of the year in the grand cycle, it, it, we can open ourselves to tap into that as well. And that is the realm of the ancestors as well, so we can open ourselves to, to their wisdoms. So I have here the, the altar of the sort of friend of, you know, the, um, another one of the lands of my heart, inspired. And so I invite you in this time as well to, whether it is in front of an altar or, you know, curling up in that, that space within, um, to just take some time to rest embraced by the dark and allowing the energies from the past cycle to be released and the wisdoms to remain and opening up to what is to come. This is the threshold of the darkest time of the year and there is nothing to be done except to breathe. This is an invitation to rest and to listen to the heartbeat of the cosmos opening yourself to the gathering energies and await the light. So as you breathe, eyes closed, with each of four breaths, bring your awareness fully to each of the four directions that surround you and the elements that are aligned with each. Breathe into the north. Into the element of earth. Be aware of your body, 
how you hold it in this moment, how it sits or lies on the earth. And breathe into east, the element of air. And be aware of the air that moves through you, your breath. And how it opens you to moving that life force within. Breathe into the south, to the element of fire. If you have a candle that has not been lit, a gold candle, you can light it now. And as you connect with that element of fire, connect with the energy of that life force within. The will, the passion that has carried you through so many days. Breathe into west, to the element of water, and how it flows through you, through your emotions, and informs you of your experience and how you are engaging with life. And then breathe into the below, reaching down deep into the earth, and all of that which has come before, all of the peoples who have walked the place that you walk before, hundreds, thousands of years, and the creatures, and all of those elements of nature that all feed in to where you sit in this moment. With the next breath, reach up to the above. Expand into the limitless breadth of the cosmos. With the next breath, find yourself in the center, being aware of the elements that surround, support, inform. From this place in the center, the element of ether, connect with the deities if you have on your altar reflection of the divine who speaks to you of this time. And know as you connect with all of these elements around, above, below, and center, that you yourself are also at that center. You hold this space at the hub of the universe the meeting place of spirit above and matter below. And magic that surrounds. And with all of our rituals, we talk about this place as being the sitting place of Caridwin herself, the one who holds and stirs the cauldron.
But at this time, as we are dipping into the darkest time of the dark, we no longer sit in the place where Caridwen sits. We lie in her cauldron, taking the final journey before re-emerging into the light. So allow yourself to imagine that in this deeply silent space, you hear the faint thrumming rhythm of a drumbeat the sound of her heart, the heart of the mother, the mother of Awen, the mother of all. And allow this faint heartbeat to take you on a journey. There's nothing that you need to do. Just allow yourself to be carried along beat by beat by beat. Allow yourself to experience where it takes you.
and ever, ever so slowly allow yourself to uncurl if you are curled in the fetal position allow yourself to stretch allow yourself to emerge from the cauldron and as you do as you slowly start to come out from that space see the golden flame that has held that space while you journeyed and take some time to gaze into that flame take some time to open up your heart to receive a message from spirit or from ancestors and take some time as well to choose three numbers I have three decks. It's usually we have one deck that um, that we work with in ritual. But this time there were three that were called like the three drops of wisdom <laughs> from Caridwin's Cauldron. So of one deck there are three cards. Of another deck there are four cards, and of the third deck, there are five cards. And so as you hold this space, as you gaze into the flame, think of what number between one and three that comes to you. And think of a number between one and four that comes to you. And think of a number between one and five that comes to you. And so just holding space, just gazing into the candle, I'm going to go through what these cards are. So of the cards of three, these are from the Santa Muerte Oracle. And if you chose one, here are my cards. So, this is who has come to you. I will be posting all of these. And I will read what the message this is. Oi. Kalchuilike. She is the goddess of the waters, lakes, seas, and sailors. Also the goddess of beauty and fertility. And her advice to you is, do not fight against the flow you are in. A river cannot be tamed with force. You must surrender to its current and use its strength as if it were your own. So that is if you chose number one. If you chose number two,
and this message from the dead. So this is a message of action, a dynamic card that pushes you to continue your actions. So the advice of the dead says, you have the necessary baggage on your shoulders to face the new adventure before you. Do not fear and proceed without giving the problems of the past too much importance. And if you chose number three, this is realization the card of the accomplishment of one's work and the advice of the dead is it is time to understand the nature of your act because realization is coming and the results are near so out of that Whichever of those you chose, it will be informed also by the Dia de los Muertos oracle. So this is where you chose one to four. So just remember which number it was that you chose. And if you chose, oh, someone's just coming in. If you chose number one, you have bebida. Priyanka, you may just want to turn off your video. Okay. So, let me just read bebida. And there's a lot more to, I'm just reading a, a little tiny bit, but I will um, be posting the whole message. So Bebida, the message of this is, be drunk on love and never thirst again. It has a bit of a quote from Pablo Neruda. And I, infinitesimal being, drunk with the great starry void, likeness, image of mystery, I felt myself a pure part of the abyss. I wheeled with the stars. My heart broke loose on the wind. If you chose number two, you have Cruz. Resurrect your true purpose for living. And the quote here is, let your faith be bigger than your fear. If you chose number three, Rosario. And this message is, be carried by the power of prayer. And the quote is from Sister Lucia of the Seers of Fatima. There is no problem, I tell you, no matter how difficult it is, that we cannot resolve by the prayer of the Holy Rosary. And if you chose number four, you have Pueblo.
allow yourself to be uplifted by your community. And this is a bit of a poem. Hold on to what is good, even if it is a handful of earth. Hold on to what you believe, even if it is a tree which stands by itself. Hold on to what you must do, even if it is a long way from here. Hold on to life, even when it is easier letting go. Hold on to my hand, even when I have gone away from you. And the last reflection, remember which number you chose between one and five. I'm just looking to where I have the book. Here it is. So if you chose number one, and this is from the Between the Worlds Oracle, which I have never used before. This is the first time. So if you chose number one, you have gold coin. So this is the third reflection, the third drop of wisdom. So this is all about abundance and scarcity. In circulation. It says at the edge of the grass, out of sight, behind a rock, under a rose bush, it waited patiently. It had no memory of how it came to be there or even how it came to be. Days were spent basking in sunshine, being washed in the rain, listening to crickets at night, watching the sun rise and set. So it sat until one day it was picked up and taken somewhere. How we perceive and how we interact with wealth affects our quality of life. If you chose number two, it is the acorn. And this is about growth and decay, it says squirrel spirit. How many of these do you need? This is like living with a squirrel. We have a bucket of acorns inside the house and very few trees out there. Put them back in the garden and let them grow into majestic trees. The message is acorns are seeds and every seed grows when nurtured and in the right environment. You are growing, so make sure that you have the right environment around you. If you chose number three, It is the skull. Ancestral agreement or ancestral cautioning, the casting. A short stub of a white pillar candle illuminated the table in front of her. It was quiet sometime after midnight, full moon in Gemini, she was alone. She inhaled the incense deeply into the center of herself and focused on the shallow cherry wood bowl in her hands. So it says the streaming words from the skull. Silence returned. 
When she looked at the head, or the, the bead she had been staring at the whole time, a hint of a mouth seemed to be smiling and said, We are the voice of your ancestors. Those who have come before us helped us with their survival skills. In acknowledging them, we continue a line of wisdom for future generations. So there's more of a story here, which I will post. If you chose number four, it is the ring. This is the dualism between partnership and solitude. And it is about destiny. Again, there's a whole story here. But I will go to the message, which is, we all have a good love story at some point in our lives. And yours may come to an interesting or unexpected resolution. So it may not just be about a partnership, but an excellent time for team building. And learning how to stay true to yourself. And the last, if you chose number five, it is the wishbone. interesting because these last three were sort of one right after the other in the deck even though it was well shuffled so they wanted to come six seven and eight so wishbone is fulfillment and longing and its message is when considering equity we can look to individual as well as communal needs to find balance your current process of wishing is aligning with your actions and you will receive a positive response. Ritual will assist you in manifesting your intent and your ability to attract positive energy working in your favor. So just take a moment a lot of information remember what your card number one was from Santa Muerte the message directly from the mouths of the ancestors and what the message was from the Dia de los Muertes Oracle which is more about all of those elements that surround the honoring of the ancestors. And the message that came from the third, which is the object, perhaps the gift from the ancestors. And just take a moment to listen to how the three of those weave together something which is your message to sit within this time of the dark to allow it to continue to unfold its message until the time when we come back into the light and there may be something about this message which speaks to your essence. There might be something about this message which speaks to the situation that you find yourself in at this time in your life. The transition from what you are coming from into what you are moving into. Bringing your awareness once more back to your breath. We move through 
each of the directions once more. Just thanking and honoring how each of them has held space for us to go through this journey. So starting in the north, We thank the element of earth for holding this foundational space. And in the east, sending gratitude to air for bringing clarity. And in the south, the element of fire for bringing vision and holding that vision within ourselves, knowing that we always have that access to that insight from our third eye. Release the flame from your golden candle. And in the West, thanking water for always providing the movement of flow upon which we can ride. And above, just acknowledging the all that always has been, that we are a part of, we come out of, we return to. and the below and the ancestors who have walked with us this very night in this space between. And finally, hands on heart, taking a deep breath in And thanking deity who has shown up, the gods and goddesses who brought their energy to this ritual, and also honoring that reflection of the divine within, that spark which lives within us. Taking one more deep centering breath, Allow yourself to arrive back in your space. And I thank you for sharing this space. I'm going to stop the recording. And for those who want to stay and chat about <laughs> all those cards, um, you're welcome to. So may you find wisdom in the dark. And may you find the song of your own soul in the dark and bring that beautiful song back when the light returns.